Okay, that you don't seem genuine. That's a good one, Scott. Now tell me more about that. Why would you not? Why would you think someone isn't thinking you're being genuine? Why? Like, why? Tell me more about your 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 thought there. I think sometimes it's um, you know, you're relying on something, and so uh, you may be not speaking. Uh, as you normally do, you know, it seems a little more robotic or um, uh, less casual. Okay. And so I think, you know, it takes time to sort of make that script your own. Yeah, it, it takes time. Uh, your time on task beats talent every time. Right? You know, so like, uh, I, know we, I know we lost yesterday, but Tom Brady is really good at throwing football, right? He's done it more than once. He's not just kind of winging it. Like he has coaches and people help him, you know, and he went to seminars and he learned how to just throw and all that, right? And he conditioned his arm and all that kind of stuff, right? So I'm going to turn that around, Scott. I'm going to give you more of a positive way to think about what you just said. Okay, when I practice my scripts, I become excellent. When I practice my scripts, I become excellent. I am an excellent real estate agent. I love helping people in real estate. I love lead generating because it enables me to provide for my family. I have tremendous respect for my role play partner. Her name is Kim. And I love that she shows up on time every week without fail and that we help each other and we stay sharp on our scripts. So you see how I'm speaking positively about it, Scott? Yeah. So that when I'm speaking with my client, I know what they're going to say. Because Keller Williams and Bold and my coaches, they've already taught me what these objections are going to be. So when they come in, Layla, with this objection, and I can hear the first word they say, I know what it, I know what it is they say. And I'm so thankful that I, I understand that the job of a real estate agent is. Practice and role play. If I'm not practicing and role playing and knowing my scripts, then I'm like a pastor that doesn't know the Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm like a, I'm like a doctor that never went to the convention to learn about the latest medicines and the latest tools and the latest bandages and all the things. I'm like a mechanic that says he works on ball boards and he's never opened the hood of a ball board. I just really don't have any business being in front of me. I mean, the average commission is something like six or seven thousand dollars these days in enrollments in real estate. That's big money, right? Right. So let's treat our clients with respect and let's be practice stuff and let's understand this, okay? So limiting beliefs are real. We have them. Knowing how to overcome them is part of our job. The process, something that Nancy said earlier, the process of scripting, don't get this out of whack. Don't get this out of order, okay? Do not customize first. You want to memorize the scripts, then internalize them, or you don't need to have them in front of you anymore, and then customize them. Memorize them, then internalize them, and only then you customize them. This is from Bold. If you're wondering where I'm getting a lot of control from, it's from the Bold curriculum. Okay. So which scripts? There's only in my mind, there's only two. There's Bold and there's Bold 2.0. And what's great about Bold, Business Objective Left by Design, the faculty that writes it, they move with the market, they're ahead of the market. The scripts move. So you will not find yourself reading a script and you're like, oh, that is so 2005. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so, oh wow, really? Yeah. That's not the company we keep. Every week, I'm role playing with my script on that. It's, it's an important appointment in my week. And uh, I love that she keeps to it. And um, we keep to it together, and it's important for our businesses. If you do not have a role play partner, um, 
I can, with everyone's permission, I can send out everyone's email that was on this call today. Um, and then you can team up, you could, you could talk. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Okay. All right, so here's the script. This is from, uh, her name was Ella Wheeler. And it's something that we say in bold. And it just, when you stand up at the end of the, the class, the beginning of the class and the end of the class, we actually stand up and say this. And the first time that we said this, I thought I was, uh, I thought it was weird. I thought it was some kind of prosperity gospel stuff. I thought it was fake. I thought that there were, I thought it was like some weird cult thing or something. But we're actually all going to stand up and say it right now. Okay. Because this speaks to ourselves. Because the most important script is what we actually say to ourselves. So we'll be, we'll be standing up. So everyone at home, Scott, if you can stand up with me, we're going to speak this after three, one, two, three. There is no chance, no destiny, no faith that can circumvent, hinder, or control the firm resolve of my determined soul. Right? And then a bulldog was going, hook up or something. All right, thank you, see everyone. Uh, the reason I put that there is that's a script and it's something that we're telling ourselves. And that's the most important communication that we have in our head is the script that we actually tell ourselves. It's not what we tell other people. That's just the byproduct of the way we actually speak for ourselves. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. A few bold laws here. Three of the laws that we're focusing on today are fear or faith. You choose. You see on the left, fear or faith. Well, you choose. You're either going to have a day filled with faith and trust, and you're going to be serving each other and, and serving other people, and you're going to be thankful for everything that's going on in your life. Even if it's difficult, you're going to be thankful that you can overcome it. It's going to build your character. Did that sound positive? Yeah, right. So faith, right? It's this, it's this power that is available to all of us, okay? The second one is no pressure, no diamonds. That's a famous old law. No pressure, no diamonds. So, Scott, if someone, let's say, you call them, hey, will you listen to me today? And they say, no. And you say, okay, well, thanks for saying no. And tell me more about that. Well, there's a little bit of pressure there. You're not just saying, okay, bye. Uh, sorry I bothered you. Have a good day. <laughs> You're saying, okay, no. Um, is that a firm no or is that a maybe no? Can you tell me more about that? You know, you're just asking, right? You're, you're coming from a place of faith and a place of contribution. All right, last one life by design, not by default. When I drive across the Cape Fear Memorial Bridge, Layla, and I'm going all the way down there to Bolivia to show a house, am I glad that those engineers did their math? And figured out how many rivets to put in the steel girders. I'm not like, do I feel good about that? Or would I prefer that they were just kind of waiting, like walking around having a cigarette? Like, well, I guess it looks good. Yeah. So we want to be by design, all right? My personality is not that way. You know, I'm much more creative. I'm, I play music, I play piano, and I love, I love art and I love creativity. So it doesn't come easy for me to be structured and rigid. So that's why it's especially good for my personality to learn about this stuff. Does that make sense? To know a little bit about your personality and about where your strengths and weaknesses are. Okay, so we've got to know what to say and how to say it. And what we're going to do, we're going to watch a little video and I'm going to make sure that we can hear the sound. And this is going to be a buyer video. That is used to establish. And Scott, did you hear that when I played it? Yeah. Okay. So you can adjust the volume on your machine if you need to. And if you're not all aware of what Connect is, uh, maybe someone in the room, do y'all know what Connect, Keller Williams Connect? Can y'all help everyone know what Connect is? Does anyone know? So you can post about who you are, where you're serving, right, your and profile. send invitations out to connect with people. That's exactly right. So that's part of it. 
So command is our CRM, and, and it's how we follow our leads, our lead generation, our lead follow up. Something's listed, something's on contract, and then closing, and then post closing, and all of our marketing okay, is on command. Connect is education. The educational piece. If I want to know about Nancy, I'm going to go to Connect. It's going to tell me all about her business, how many units she did last year, what area she's in, what's important to her, all that kind of thing. So Connect is also where all of the educational videos, documents, open source documents are all throughout Connect. And when you're looking for something, make sure that you click on relevance. Because what it does is it puts the newest thing. But you don't want the newest thing, you want the relevance. So in this one, we're going to look at two things. The first thing is a buyer consultation. And the second thing is a seller consultation. And then we'll finish out the class focusing on listing objections. So here's a quick buyer consultation. And then we'll have a little discussion afterwards. Needs analysis. The systematic process of collecting information about needs, wants, and desires that is used to establish and define goals. Step two of the buyer consultation is the needs analysis. Only when you understand what is ultimately important to your customers can you deliver it. Many agents ask their clients, what do you want in a house, and stop there. They don't realize the answer to that question isn't the same as what do you need or what's important to you. Determining your customer's core wants, needs, and values is a process. Draw a line down the middle of a piece of paper and write needs on the left and wants on the right, and use it to track their needs and wants as you go through this process. At this point, you will have a clear understanding of what buyers need versus what they want, but you are not done. Now, you want to drill down and uncover their values by finding out why they need and want what they do. Use this question, what about blank is important to you? Let's see how it works. Say your buyer has told you that they want or need a large yard. You say, So what's about a large yard that's important to you? Your buyer says, I like to garden. You ask, You like gardening, and what's important about gardening? Your buyer says, I like to spend time outdoors, it helps me relax. You ask, Makes you feel relaxed. And what's important about being relaxed? Your buyer says, When I'm relaxed, I can spend more quality time with my wife. Bullseye. A large yard equals family. At this point, you have uncovered a value. You can now look for other ways it applies to your buyer. A large yard is important because it allows you to spend quality time with your wife, correct? So what else about your new home would be important to you in terms of spending more time with your wife? Exercise. Find a partner in class and ask them about their favorite part of their house and why it's important. Drill down with your questions to find out why. So that's just a little example. Can you, can you still hear me, Scott? Yeah. That's just a little example of Keller Williams Connect. And I'll go first. The favorite part of my home is the living room when all the family is together before we go out the door to go about our day. Because it's the only time in the day that the whole family is together at the same time. And I love my family. Would anyone else like to share? What's the most important place in their home? Anyone online or anyone here? Nancy, Nancy's volunteering, here we go. My favorite place in my home is my porch. It's where I go to get centered. And being centered allows me to be focused and clear on what it is that I need to get done for the day. It's a place of rest as I'm wrapping up the day and emptying my mind of my to-do list for the day so I can rest well at night. Thank you for sharing that. So wouldn't that be powerful if your agent asked you that question? Mm -hmm. So that when you're looking at the home, that would even be more important than any, maybe anything else about the home, like the kitchen or the bedroom or something. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be great service? Okay, so that was an example of a script being asked in a certain intentional way to help a client find out what they really need. 
Does that make sense? Anyone online like to share? No? Okay. Okay, so here's an example of a seller script. Again, this is taken from Connect. Um, I would certainly encourage everyone on this call to take time during the week to further your knowledge. And if indeed that's why we're all here today too. So thank you for being on. But what is it, right, that you need to learn about? It? And we're getting bombarded every day with people trying to sell us some lead generation service or whatever it is. So when you know what your purpose is, your big why is, you have a business plan, it will enable you to be by design and to say no to more people. You'll be able to say no. Thank you for calling me if I'm not interested. Okay. So with Connect, if it's you in charge, you're able to, to look into this great database. And by the way, does anyone know who it was, the agent that was standing there in front of us speaking in that video? That was Tony DeSello. He married Diana Krakowska. Tony is an incredibly successful real estate agent that I have a ton of respect for. And they used to have these script offs at, at Command, at um, Family Union live sessions where they had seller objections and Tony would be up there it was absolutely it was absolutely amazing it would be like learning guitar from another planet anyway his, that guy's name was Tony DeSello if you haven't if you don't already follow him on Facebook then you should Tony is Tony DeSello D-I-C-E-O all right let's do this seller script Rapport, a connection, especially a harmonious or sympathetic relation. Step three and four of the listing consultation is entering, touring, and beginning the conversation. Set expectations up front. One of three things will happen today. You'll list with me, you may decide not to list with me, or I may choose not to list your home. And lead up to the one thing you most need to know their motivation to sell. Do you want to sell? Why are you selling? Touring the home is an excellent opportunity to grow your relationship. Compliment the positives you see. You have a very welcoming entryway. I love your artwork. And set yourself up as the expert. That half bath near the entryway is a feature a lot of buyers like. Did you know that? The front of your home is critical for curb appeal. Are you willing to make an investment in sprucing up your yard? You're going to be glad you did. It's the first thing buyers see, and first impressions really count. Keep in mind, some associates prefer to tour alone and have their sellers complete information sheets from the pre-listing package. How confident you are in your rapport building skills may decide which way you prefer. The choice is yours. Exercise. Find a partner and role play rapport building techniques. What will you ask? How will you follow up on their answers? So rapport, rapport, building rapport. I think this goes back to what Scott shared earlier, to not feel like a, you didn't use the word fake, but to not feel like a salesman, right? To not yeah. feel like you're, like this, this is how we build trust. The word is trust. The word is really trust. And you have trust by always telling the truth, by being relaxed, by knowing what to say. And I would certainly say by having a checklist, by following a checklist. I would say that would be the most important thing. Again, if you have not ever taken bold, and you're not familiar with the bold listening presentation, learn it. That would be the biggest takeaway from this class. Like, read it, you know, because it says, you know, there's three things will happen today. We're going to discuss your motivation to sell. I'm going to answer any questions you have. And then, like Chris Heller just said, by the way, and then we'll decide if you want to work with me, and I'll decide if I want to work with you. Is that fair? That's the script. Right? I'm going to say that again. Three things will happen today. And we'll discuss your motivation to sell. 
Second of all, I'll answer any questions you have. And then third of all, you'll decide if you want to work with me and I'll decide if you want to work with you. Is that fair? That's a script. I can say that again and again and again. It doesn't matter who it is I'm speaking to. It just takes a lot of the fire out of the, takes a lot of the stress out of the situation. Like I was role playing with Layla earlier on the open house. Was that helpful? Yeah. Right. So in an open house, Layla, what was the script with the open house? It was. Speak up so everyone can hear you. So they walk in and you introduce yourself. Um, and then you said, are you, you're here for two reasons. Are you here because you're buying or are you here because you're selling? I'm so impressed that you remembered that because she didn't know I was going to put her on the spot right now. <laughs> and yeah, real estate's like that sometimes, right? We find ourselves on the spot here at the grocery store. Oh, you're right. We see your name tag. Oh, you're right. Real estate. Hey, can I talk to you? I mean, that you, you just had an appointment right now, just in the grocery store. I mean, that's the way real estate works, right? You could be at a ball game or, you know, at a restaurant, right? You're just always meeting people all the time, right? You're a walking billboard for how amazing you are, right? I'm a walking billboard for how amazing I am. That's the script that I tell myself all the time. So I'm really, so I'm really impressed that you remembered that. Okay, there's two reasons why someone comes in or open house. They're either buying or selling. Which is it? And they're like, how do you know I was going to sell my house? Or they'll say, oh, neither. Uh, I just live in the. I just live in the neighborhood. Oh, great. How long? You, how long have you lived in the neighborhood? Right. So have these script. Have them ready. Look, I have my scripts with me in my, in my, my briefcase. When I'm on an appointment, I have them with me. Sometimes I'll have them just list, just right in front of me. I mean, don't we all go to appointments and someone has their script right in front of them? Like if you go to the optometrist or if you go to the doctor, I mean, don't they have scripts? Don't they have a laptop in front of them and they're filling some? I mean, right? Don't, don't you expect them to go through a checklist? So it's perfectly fine to have scripts in front of them. Okay, so we're going to look at some scripts right now. And here are the five common listing presentation objections. So we're focusing on listings, leads, listings, leverage, right? So the triangle, famous triangle, right? So we all, we list, we list, we list. When you list, you last in real estate. When you list, you last, okay? Listings are awesome. They're a fantastic strength to the business of real estate. So here's the five common listing present objections. Monica, can you please stand up? Please stand up. And in a nice loud voice, can you just go ahead and tell us what are the five main listing presentation objections? Go. No, I just that. We have a, we have other agents. Um, we're thinking about listing with XYZ because we've never heard about your company before. Um, the other agent said that they'd sell it for less commission. We want to uh, think it over. And another agent said that they could give me more money. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Monica, thank you very That's much it. for that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to find it right here. I've listened to you about how other agents interview. Well, excellent. Other than having other agents interview, is there any other reason why you wouldn't list with me today? Now, in bold, if you see three dots, see before list with me and just after list with me. When you see the three dots, it's what's called an embedded command. Remember to go back to the children and to the dishwasher. Clean up your room. Tie your shoe. These are embedded commands, right? You do not want to say, uh, could you uh, add to the dishwasher, please? Because mom's coming home in like two minutes and we're going to be in trouble. No, add to the dishwasher. So you see, less of me. Excellent. Other than having other agents interview, is there any other reason why you wouldn't list with me today? Okay. So uh, let's role play. Um, could you sign up for me? And I'm going to be. The, um, the seller, and you're going to call me, and I'm going to tell you that I've listened to you about how other agents interview, and then you're going to read one of these off, too. Okay. So, so you're going to say ring, ring. When we're role playing, you say ring, ring, and then I'm going to answer you. Okay, so let's go. Okay, ring, ring. Hello. 
Hello, it's Jason. Hi, Jason. It's Kayla May calling you again, following up on that um, unlisting your home like you talked about. Um, I know that you said that you had other agents to interview, so I wanted to ask you, uh, other than having other agents to interview, is there another reason why you wouldn't list with me today? Well, you know, we were thinking about listing with XYZ, because, you know, we've actually never heard of your company. I mean, I really like you, and I like you called me again, but we've just never really heard of your company. Okay, I appreciate that. In fact, thank you for bringing that up. As we think about who really sells a house, it's the agent, not the company, right? Okay, do y'all see the power of that? So I'm going to give you one more. Keep going. I'm proud of you. Keep going. But, you know, the other agent said they'd sell it for less commission. Great. So what I hear you saying is you desire to net the most money possible, right? Every seller that decides to choose me desires the same thing. Many people think that they will get the same price regardless of who is conducting the negotiations, which we already know isn't true. Otherwise, top companies will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to hire the best negotiators. The other agent has already shown you their negotiation skills by giving up their own money. What will happen when you ask them to take care of your money? Thank you. Have a seat. Mm. Many people think they'll get the same price regardless of his conducting the negotiation, which we already know isn't true. Otherwise, top companies wouldn't pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to hire the best negotiators. You know, the other agents already showing you their skills by giving up their own money. Wow. I mean, that's just scary. They just gave up their own money. You know, and when we were at family reunion about five years ago now, there was an agent from Miami. She says, oh my gosh, that is so scary. They just gave away their own money. This is the way that they provide for their family. They gave away all their own money just like that. How quick are they going to be giving away? It's, 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 your, it's not even their money. They're going to be giving away your money. Now, when's a good time to get together? Two o'clock up here. So she memorized it, she internalized it, and she customized it to her fire. She was this lady from Miami, and she just had this fire. Now, I'm Scottish, and I have this other accent and this other way about it. You know, so I'd be like, wow, you know, that isn't true. Otherwise, top companies, you know, they would pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to hire the best negotiators, would they? Wow. The other agent just showed you their best negotiation skill is giving away their money. Ooh, wow. When's a good time to get together? Is three o'clock good or is four o'clock better? So we are memorizing it. We're internalizing it. So I don't need to have this in front of me to know this thing deep down in my soul to know it, to provide for my family by being a good agent. Okay. Layla, you want to volunteer? Sure. All right. On, on your feet. Is standing up and you can smile. Everyone, if you're on Zoom, smile right now. Go ahead and smile. Go on. Doesn't that feel good? Don't you want to work with someone that smiles, that's smiling, that's happy, they're, they're alive, they're right? Don't people want to be with a winner? Right? So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I got that. So um, you're going to call me and I'm going to say, we're going to think of all right, so just go ahead and call me. Okay. Okay. Hello, it's Jason. Hey, Jason. It's Layla with Connor Williams. So I'm just calling follow up. I know that we had been talking about listing your home, mm. um, and I just wanted to see if you and your wife had come to a decision. Well, Layla, thank you for calling me. I was talking to my wife about that, and you know, we actually did want to think of over. Okay, that's great. It is very important that you make the right decision. I think that's something that you and I both value. So, what specifically do you need to think about? You know. I was actually, well, here's what it is. There was this other lady, and she's a friend of ours from church, and she actually said that she'd do it for less commission. Would you do that? Would you do it for less commission? So what I hear you saying is that you desire to net the most money possible. Is that correct? Definitely. So every seller that decides to choose me desires the same thing. Now you're going to do that again. Layla, I really want to thank you for role playing with me right now. So, so we're really going to do this right. If you see those three dots, it's an embedded command. 
Choose me. Can you go ahead and say that with me? Choose, choose me. me. Say, choose me. Choose me. Say, sign here. Sign here. Sell your house. Sell your house. Work with me. Work with me. Make more money. Make more money. Have a great day. Have a great day. Choose me. Choose me. All right, so Did we're going to do it. Don't change to that or just, just. Choose me. It's, it's a down swing. Okay. In, in bold, they say it's, uh, what's the guy with the, um, do the chop guy, the guy that was. Oh, Jackie Chan. No, the other <laughs> judo guy. It's a down, it's got to be this down swing like that, right? So choose me. So you get out of your comfort zone. This is exactly why we're here. So, you know, the other agents said they'd sell it for more commission available. Great. So what I hear you saying is that you desire to net the most money possible, right? Every yeah. seller that decides to choose me desires the same thing. Mm -hmm. So see, many people think that they will get the same price regardless of who is conducting the negotiations, which we already know isn't true. Otherwise, top countries would not pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to hire the best negotiators. The other agent has already shown you their negotiation skills by giving up their own money. What will happen when you ask them to give you, take care of your money? Well, I mean, look, I really, I appreciate that. And for you, I appreciate you taking the time to explain that. But, you know, they actually said they could give you more money. So they weren't only saying they could do less commission. I mean, I hear you on that. But you're saying it's 325? They said they were going to list for three forty nine. I could put your house in the market at that price. The other agent was willing to, and you know what scares me about that? What? You would have the same problem that you'll have with any agent. Agents in our town knew that what a house in this area is worth at this time, and when they have a buyer, they sit down at the computer and find houses in the price range that their buyer is willing to pay. They show the houses that are of the best value. Based on what I showed you this evening, does it make sense that they would show your house with a higher price than the others? Of course they would show it if they choose to sell another house that maybe they had listed. And they would use your house to convince the buyers they were getting a better deal on the other house. Okay, so what price do you think we should list that then? Now we're on the phone. Mm -hmm. Z Zoomies, if I'm asking her a price on the phone, should she give me the price on the phone? Yes or no? Yes or no? Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay, the answer is no. She should not list on the phone. Don't list on the phone. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get the appointment, you know? So what price? So I'm gonna say what? You're gonna have to get appointment ready. Mm -hmm. So back to role play. So anyway, they said to do 349 and you were talking about 325. So what price you can always the house for? You know, that is something that I would love to meet with you about. Does tomorrow at three work best for you or would four be better? Uh, actually, I'm free today, but short notice. Could you meet at five o'clock today? I can make that work for you. Okay, what kind of car do you drive? I drive a white Nissan. Okay, good. I'll see you at five. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jason. Okay, so just, just, a, just a, a pro tip there. Don't list over the phone. All right. And when people call you, have a seat. Well done. Thank you so much for volunteering. So when people are looking for information, they're trying to grab information from you, right? Whether it's Zillow trying to call you to become one of their, their you know, people, or nothing against that, but whether they're calling you to get information or someone calling, asking about house or whatever it is, don't be the information kiosk. Mm -hmm. You didn't go to the, the trouble of getting your license and all of that. You can be a much better help to someone on a Zoom call with them, okay, or in the office, okay, or at their house with some social distancing or whatever you need to do. You, everyone say, okay. okay. All right, so we're, we're not, we're not information booths, we're real estate agents. So thank you for appreciating that. So again, the top five were, I list with you, but I have other agents to interview. You, you got to have it in your mind like that, like I'm a guitar player, okay? I like to have a pick, right? To be ready to play guitar. You gotta have it ready, ready. It's like if you have a particular faith and someone asks you about your faith and they're asking you about your faith, Monica, mm -hmm. and you have an opportunity to share your faith with someone because they just asked you, would you know what to say? And I would say that knowing, for me, it would be knowing the Bible. It would be knowing some verses mm -hmm. in the Bible. 
So instead of it being the Jason Bell, oh, I'm just winging it. I'm, I'm back in E land. I want to be P. I want to be purposeful, know the words, then I'm able to actually help the person. Okay. So how about the agents interview? Nancy, what's your go to if someone says, you know, I'd listen to you, but I actually have other agents interview? What would you say? So what you so what you would say is you choose one of these and you would focus in on it and know it, you'd memorize it, internalize it, customize it. So choose one of these and you go ahead and speak it right now. Let me do this. I don't mind. I've done it with many sellers. I'll call the other agent, and this is what I'll say. They liked you. They were looking forward to meeting with you, and I convinced them to list with me. And if you have a buyer, we would love for you to bring them by. And of course, if they buy the house. I'll naturally pay you part of my commission. Now I'm going to be tough. I'm going to be a tough coach right now. Remember that your voice goes down. If you're playing piano, you're going da da da. You're going down the way on the keyboard. Okay, so they liked you. You know, I, I look, and this is what I'll say. You know, they liked you, and they were actually looking forward to meeting with you. And I convinced them to listen to me. And if you have a buyer, we'd love for you to bring the buyer. And of course, if they buy the house, then I'll naturally pay you part of my commission. And here's my customize on that one, Nancy, is because wouldn't that be better for them too? Because now they're not wasting, you know, two, three hours that they could be spent in a more productive way. I'll save you the bother. I'll make that professional phone call. Does that sound good? Okay. Let's go ahead and sign. And when I first read that, I was like, oh my gosh, that is bold. That is really bold. That, that is football. You're just coming in and pushing them. And yet you're there, you're right now, and taking that kind of action and taking that <coughs> listing, action, action, the results would be you listed the hand. So now you're programming about that kind of script. Just got very positive. You, ha you have a much more positive thought and a better feeling about saying that again to somebody, and then your results will still go up and up and up and up. So you did really well, Nancy. That's a tough one. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. So some of the some of these scripts are like really really wordy, and then the other ones basically say the same thing, and they're more to say. Is it better just to? They all are saying some of the same thing, right? Should you not? To me, I, I want to do the one that has a line and a half to try to memorize that, you know? It depends on who you're speaking to. Okay. We want to mirror and match. Oh, yeah, you're right, okay. So, so if you're, uh, you know, if someone's from Long Island, mm -hmm. you want to get in and typically get in and out, depending on the personality. Mm -hmm. But if someone really just wants to take time, sometimes an older person that's maybe got more time and they really just want to talk to you about everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> your yard and stuff, yeah. and about how nice your kitchen is and all that kind of stuff. So now you're you you do mirror that and you lean in and you're emphatic with them and you care about them because now you can serve them better. And then you say, "It's so nice to have met you today. You have such a beautiful home. Let's go ahead and sign the papers." And someone like that, you wouldn't use dog to sign. You get in front of them. You have papers. You have little sticky tabs. You give them the papers. You dress a bit smarter than I'm dressed today. You go there, so you're mirroring and matching whoever it is you're working with. My personality, I'm a high D. I think they were all too wordy, and it's, it's not true. Because you're taking them on, you're explaining to them how the industry works, and you're educating them. Mm -hmm. Any comments or funny stories online about the You guys okay out there? Yeah. So going back a little bit further, so whenever you're, say, someone prospecting, so whenever you're circle prospecting, you're using Mojo and you're just trying to look for these buyers and seller leads, what do you think the best script is for that? Okay, did you just say trying? He doesn't like the word try. No, it's not me. No, he said there's no trying. It's either doing or not. When you it's, not, it's, not, it's not Jason Bell here, guys. We're getting <laughs> no, but I remember when you told me the other, the other week. I still remember. There's no bugger trying. So you, we are looking thank you. for the seller and buyer leads, what 
Do you think is best? Thank you for that. Because I do online lead gen all the time too. And I, in fact, I haven't done it this morning, so I got to do it right after this class. Because yeah. um, I was able to work the house this morning. So, Yay. yes. So, thank you. So, here's, here's what I would do is you're mirroring and matching. If it's a text, text them back. If they emailed you, email them back. No, I'm saying you reaching out first. So, you're just oh. calling into the neighborhood who. You know, you might have just sold a home there, or your clients are looking for a home there, or you're just trying to get some sort of business started. Good. So I would go to connect and I would find circle prospect and scripts. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that a really good script there is hey, it's Jason Bell with Keller Williams Realty. And naturally, I'm actually trying to find sellers from the buyers and also buyers for our sellers. I mean, after all, that's what you want your agent to do. I mean, if you're working with an agent, right? So let me ask you, who do you know that might be looking to sell their home? So who do you know? Not do you know someone that might be selling their home? Because <laughs> then it's click or it's no. Right. Who do you know? What would that do for you? If you were to move, when would it be? Where did you move from? How long were you there? How, how many homes do you own? Do you like boats? <laughs> you know, you so you're just you're just kind of you can have that conversation, and then I'll just close with this, and then we're going to sign off. Every single person you speak to, get their name, get their middle initial. It's a really good script to ask someone just for your middle initial. You know, just so in the event that we will be working together, and see, it will really help me to have your middle initial. What's your middle initial? Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. So name with the middle initial. Also check if it really is their name. Because you got like Buddy and you got Ricky and all these names. Name, phone number, cell phone, right? Email address, social media handles. Very important, their physical address. Like they can give you a post office box because I'm always giving out my card and giving out gift cards. And I appreciate that. What's your physical address? Now, why am I asking for their physical address, Monica? You can communicate with them, right? In what way? What Mail. way through command? Mail. What um, way through command would I? Um, the, the postcards and whatever you want to mail out to them. Maybe that you want to do that. Uh, right. Code? It's it's that neighborhood nurture. Okay. okay. That's yeah. the that's the and then it's the two ones I'm looking for. Is that neighborhood nurture yes. is very powerful. You will not realize how good that is because that's you know that's going out there. You know, 56 to 24, it's going to have 28 times a year. Right. And the phone will ring. The phone will ring, right? And it's a 10 to 1 ratio, right? Layla, so you've got 100 people in the neighborhood nurture, you're going to have 10 pieces of business that year. Right. So send it, make sure you have those physical addresses. It's a beautiful piece of technology that Kelly Williams is curating for us. Any closing questions online, anybody? Anyone? Everyone good? Okay, thank you for a great class. Um, it's great being part of such a good company, and I just want to thank you for attention today. And I will send out this script, the 2.0, to everyone's email. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Bye, guys. See ya. Come on, buddy. No. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.